Alright, so welcome back to Video Game Development, uh, episode 4, I believe. In this episode, we'll be talking about uh, animating our characters, and uh, similarly to the last episode of weight painting, the process, once you set it up, is pretty simple. It's just a matter of actually going forward and doing it, and um, getting there um, in the first place. So, with our character here, um, there's a couple of things that we need to do straight off the bat just to set up our window um, to be ready for animating here. So if we go over to our uh, menu over here um, and we just click on this little icon right here, it brings up this menu. And currently we're in what's called properties and we're going to want to click on this one right here that just says dope sheet. So if we click there, you can see it's going to pull up this thing and we can just pull this out quite a ways. I'm just going to press T with my mouse over here to disable this. And um, then I'm going to pull up this timeline right here by just clicking and dragging right there. And the first thing that we're gonna do is with right clicking on our armature here, I'm gonna press Control Tab and it's gonna bring us into pose mode. Um, so if I put my mouse over on the very bottom where it says start here and just scroll up, um, we're gonna slide all the way down and at this very, very end window, we're gonna click right on here and we're just gonna click location and rotation. That's this one that just says lock rote right here. And if we click on that, it will just set that. Basically what that's doing is it's saying um, we want to be animating the location and the rotation of our bones, but um, we won't be saving things like the position or the scaling or anything like that. Um, and that will act, that's actually the settings that we want for um, our video game. And if we um, slide over right here by putting our mouse over this thing that says dope sheet and scrolling up, um, first we're going to click on this thing that says dope sheet and we're just going to click this one that says action editor right here. And that will pull up um, this sort of uh, new-ish looking window. And then if we put our mouse back over here, we're going to scroll back down and I'm going to set our end frame that says 250 here just to something like uh, 25 I'll do. And then if we put our mouse over here, we can just scroll up and I'm just gonna um, two fingers on the mouse pad to uh, scroll over here and just zoom in so that I can see my 25 frames. So now the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is um, right click on our bone here and we're gonna create a new animation. So for example, um, the first thing that I want to input into my game is a walk cycle because I want my character to be able to move. So I'm gonna go over here and click new and I'm just gonna call this action um, walk because I want my character to walk. And then um, we're gonna set our first position. So I'm gonna set my start frame to zero because I just prefer zero, it doesn't really matter. And then I'm gonna set this little green um, line to be wherever I want my frame to be. I'm just gonna zoom in on this one as well right here so that we can see what exactly is going on. So with our frame set at uh, zero, if we go back over to this window, we can set our position of our character to be whatever we want our position um, in our walk cycle to be. So um, if we just press A, it's gonna unselect everything. And if we press A again, it's gonna select everything. Now with my mouse over the character, if I press I, it's gonna insert the keyframe of the location and the rotation of all of the bones that are selected. Um, so for example, if I just uh, right click on this bone and click I, it's only gonna insert the keyframe for that bone. So so that's why um, we need to press A tw two times so that it selects everything. Um, but I don't want my first uh, keyframe to be him standing perfectly still. I want him to be in action. So maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on my middle bone and we're just going to move him to whatever position we want to be. So um, for my character, maybe he leans forward a little bit when he's walking. So I'm going to rotate the bone on the Y axis, um, maybe five degrees. Then I'm going to rotate both of these on the y-axis, uh, negative five degrees, and I'm gonna rotate this one, uh, maybe another five degrees as well, so that it's like he's leaning forward. Um, and then these as well, both the arms, I'm gonna set them to negative five, so that we know this is perfectly still. And then I'm just going to set my arm to move back maybe uh, 15 or 20 degrees and then my legs to move forward maybe even 30 or 35 degrees so that I set my position to what I want. So um, with this one I'm gonna set R Y let's try 25. Uh, maybe that's not quite what I want so I'm gonna do um, command Z R Y let's try 30. Yeah that looks good to me and then I'm gonna right click on this one R Y and then negative 30 to set it forward and then I'll just uh, press A to unselect that so the legs are 30 degrees, and then I'm going to take this whole root bone 
and just uh, move it down because he's about a good foot off the ground here. I'm going to press uh, G and I'm going to press Z and I'm going to press negative one and that looks about good to me. Um, yeah, and then I'm going to take this arm and I'm going to move it forward maybe another 10 degrees. So I'm going to press R, Y, negative 10. And this one, I'm going to move it backward maybe another 10 degrees. So R, Y, 10. And that's the first position that I think I want for my walk cycle. So then I'm just going to press A to select everything and insert the keyframe. So there we go. We have our first keyframe. Um, and that's at position zero. So now if I just take this and I drag it forward to position, let's say, eight here, and then I'm going to set him to the new position that I want him to be. So I'm still gonna want the head forward, I'm still gonna want all this stuff. I'm just gonna move this, ry positive 10, and then ry another positive 10, so that's going backwards. And this one we're gonna set ry uh, negative 20, so that's going forwards, and that's about where I want it. And then um, I'm gonna make sure I just insert that, and then the legs as well. I'm going to make sure that this is going forward 30. So first I'm gonna go ry negative 30, and then ry negative 30 to be going forward, and then just set this position to be going backwards. So ry 30, and then one more time ry 30, and then press A twice to be inserting the keyframe. So now you can see on keyframe zero, it was set for the opposite of what it is now. So if I take this and move it, you can see our character actually moves to the positions that we set him to move to. Um, so now what we're going to want to do is just take this keyframe. I'm just going to press Command C, and this is a keyframe zero. So this is at keyframe eight. So I'm going to go forward to keyframe 16 because that's exactly double of what our, our first animation was. And I'm just going to hit Command V so that it inserts the keyframe and just hit I. And then I'm gonna set our end keyframe from 25 to just say 16 right there because our animation is only 16 frames long. Now if I press play, you can see our character is actually moving how we set him to. A little bit of a lean forward and his legs just swinging back and forth and his arms. And that's a pretty basic animation. It's just a matter of going in and putting the time and detail into making the animation look as good as you can. So for example, I might want to add something into my animation to make it a little more lifelike. So I have eight keyframes here before the first position. So maybe I want to add a little bit more of a bounce in it. So at keyframe four here, you can see it's the perfect in-between of where everything's just perfectly facing downwards. So um, I think that maybe at keyframe zero, what we should do is rotate this upright a little bit so that it's like he's bouncing back and forth. So I'm going to hit R and then rotate it on the Y axis, negative five degrees, sorry. And I'm going to take both our arms and our legs and rotate them on the y-axis individually, um, another negative five degrees, like our y5, like this. So there we go, we have our in-between keyframe, and this way he's standing up a little bit more. I'm just going to press A twice and add that, and Command C, and go forward to keyframe 12, and Command V, and add that. So now when we hit play, it gives him a little bit more of a nudge when he's walking. Something doesn't quite look quite right about this because the animation is still very uh, robotic and repeated feeling um, because it's um, pretty uh, basic still. So what can we do? Maybe we can give the head a little bit more of a nod so that it's like it's on its own and not completely attached to the body. So let's just try doing that. Um, if I go pause the animation here and go to keyframe four, maybe we can um, rotate this so that it's standing upright as well. So R, Y, uh, five, uh, negative five, sorry. And then add that and go here, um, R, Y, negative five. Um, I remember just pressing A twice and adding it. And now let's see what that looks like. Eh, the head still looks a little bit like it's bouncing back and forth quite a bit. So maybe we'll say R, Y, 10 like this and then go forward to here R Y 10 and we just play around with our animation until we find something that we think looks good 
And so in this case, <laughs> now it kind of looks like he's doing like some sort of weird walk shuffle or something like that. Maybe what we actually want is the head bouncing back and forth from left to right a little bit. And then with those keyframes inserted, now you can see it gives him a little bit more uh, bounce to when he's walking. And that might look a little bit more lifelike, but his head is still doing this sort of funny um, uh, pharaoh pharaoh sort of thing. <laughs> So um, we kind of just can play around with that. So now it's like his head is moving a little bit. And whatever you like, um, you can just keep playing around with it until you get an animation that you're satisfied with. And there, now we have our basic um, walking animation. Don't forget to save. I will just press Command S and save there. If you want to create a new animation, there's a few different ways you can do it. But what I like to do is just go over here. And with our animation still selected, we can just hit plus, And there, it just created a duplicate of the first animation that we have. So you can see we have walk and we have walk 01. So I'm just going to name this to um, idle. And the first thing that we're going to do is it has all of our walk keyframes in there still. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press with my mouse over here, A to unselect everything. And then just B, select all the stuff that we want um, to get rid of. Um, so I don't want to get rid of this first set of keyframes, but I want to get rid of all these other ones. And I'm just going to click X and then delete. And then right here, I'm just going to set our character back to how he was originally. So the first thing that I'm going to do is with my mouse over here, I'm going to press A two times to select everything and then press space. And then I'm just going to type in clear. And the first option we have is clear pose transform. And if I hit enter, it's going to set our character back to how it was originally. And that's perfect. I'm just going to hit I and there we go. We have our character starting back to how he was. And now we can animate our next um, animation however we want. And then we can just switch back and forth in between our different animations. So here we have back to the walk again. That's all you need to know for animation. It's just a matter of doing it and then um, making sure that your animations look good. And then um, you have all the animations you want for your video game. And that's all for this episode. So uh, thank you all for watching. Hopefully in the next episode we'll get to um, exporting our character from Blender, um, downloading Unity, and um, importing our characters and getting started with the basics of starting in Unity. So thank you all for watching and see you all next time.